Suppose a small plane that is traveling at a constant horizontal velocity of 200 kilometers an hour wants to drop a package into a car on the ground moving at a constant velocity of 150 kilometers an hour. Now if the height between the plane and the car is 80 meters, at what angle should the car be at the plane's sights? So let's look at our diagram. We have our small plane that's traveling at a constant horizontal velocity of 200 kilometers an hour drops off a package into a car that is traveling 80 meters below the plane at a constant horizontal velocity of 150 kilometers an hour. We want to find the following angle. So let's pretend we draw an imaginary triangle where our hypotenuse begins at the plane and ends at the car. So we want to find what this angle with respect to our x-axis is. So in this problem, we're going to do this problem in four steps. So part A, B, C, and D. So in the first step, we're going to simplify our problem by finding the relative velocity. To find the relative velocity, we simply take the absolute value of the difference between the velocities of the two objects. So 200 kilometers minus 150 kilometers gives us 50 kilometers per hour. In other words, what we just did is the following. Now, we're making the assumption that our car is stationary, so zero kilometers per hour. And our plane is moving with a velocity of 50 kilometers an hour. So, let's go to step B. In step B, we're converting our kilometers per hour into meters per second. So, to convert, we simply take our thing that we obtained from part A, so 50 kilometers per hour, multiplied by 1,000 meters in one kilometer, multiplied by 1 divided by 300 and, or 3,600 seconds per hour. So the hours cancel, the kilometers cancel, and we are left with 13.9 meters per second. So this is our approximation for our velocity of our airplane. Now, once again, because we found because we are dealing with the relative velocity, our car is assumed to be stationary, while our plane is the object that's moving. So now let's go to part C. In part C, we want to find the distance the package actually travels along our x-axis. So let's take this triangle and let's redraw our triangle. So our car is stationary at this position. Our plane is moving at this position a distance of 80 meters above the car. So we know our height of the triangle. We, we want to find what the distance, what the base is of our triangle. In other words, how far does the object travel, does the package travel along our x-axis? If we find the x, we can then use our trigonometric tangent function to find our theta, our angle. So let's begin by figuring out how much time our package spends in the air. If we find the time, we can find the distance our package travels. To find the time, we use the following equation. So, our final distance along the y-axis is equal to our initial position along the y-axis plus our velocity, initial velocity along the y-axis, which is zero, multiplied by the time, so this guy cancels out, plus one-half times our gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by time squared. So, notice what our initial uh, position along the y-axis is. This is 80 meters and what about our y, our final position? Well, our object ends up at the ground, so this is zero. So that means when we bring our y naught over, it becomes negative. But recall that our a is also negative because we choose the upward position direction to be positive and the downward direction to be negative. So, 
After we rearrange the equation and take the radical of both sides, we see that our time is equal to this value, which is equivalent to approximately 4.04 seconds. So our package spends about 4 seconds in the air. Now, knowing how much time it spends in the air, we can calculate the distance along the x-axis knowing our initial horizontal velocity of the package. So our initial horizontal velocity of the package is exactly identical to that of the plane. So we calculated that our relative velocity of the plane was 13.9 meters per second. So this is exactly what number we use. Now this number stays constant throughout the flight because our x direction acceleration is zero. So we use the following equation. Notice that our x initial, we assume it to be zero. Our x final is what we want to find, our final position along the x-axis. Notice that our ax, our acceleration along the x-axis is zero, so we are left with x equals this term. So 13.9 meters per second multiplied by 4.04 seconds gives us approximately 56.2 meters. So our distance that our object travels along the x-axis is equivalent to 56.2 meters. And now finally, we go to part D in which we use our tangent trigonometric function to find our angle. So notice that tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, so it's 80 divided by 56.2. Now, we take the inverse of the tangent function of both sides and we get the angle is equal to tangent inverse A divided by 56.2 and we get approximately 55 degrees. So, our answer, this angle is 55 degrees.